Oh, very. Oh, thank you, Sonia. It didn't. Yes, it didn't actually. I wasn't recording. So thank you, Sonia. I thought I had pressed go, but maybe when I shared it stopped recording. Cool. Okay. So we begin the review. It, it's all timely. Okay. So here we are. You don't have to do cover sheets and stuff, guys. It, it goes into the, um, it goes in through East and that. I don't need the declarations and cover sheets and stuff. Just ensure that your name's on the sheet. So here we go. The abstract. Uh, it's it's the overall summary. It's best to do it last. Okay, please do the abstract last. Uh, leave it. Um, you, you, while you're doing this assignment, I anticipate that you're reading lots of journal articles, so you're seeing what abstracts and look like, and you're seeing the structure. Uh, uh, another annoying question: Do we have to include a title for our report now? Um, uh, Tiama has said annoying question. I didn't say annoying question. Um, it's a very good question. Yes, give it a title. Give it a title. That'd be awesome. Think carefully about the title. And again, I usually have with my journal articles, I'll have a working title. And then after the abstract, the title sort of emerges. So yeah, give it, give that some thought, please. So do it last, right? Now, the introduction, just some tips about this. This opens up everything, okay? So the main things we're going to be talking about, of course, are our species, yeah? Um, that, that, so we're going to be um, experts about our, our species, okay? So we're going to have to mention that. We're also going to talk about climate change. And, and to some degree, we're going to have some comment on, on citizen science. And I'll just talk about these things um, in, in a sec. So in the introduction, you can introduce your species and start talking about it, yeah, and what the problem with it, explain what climate change is and um, the impacts and impact on our species. Uh, and then we'll look at the role of, mention the role of citizen science. So citizen science, if you did not get involved in a citizen science program, it's okay. If you were, if you, got involved with one and you submitted a bit of data, that's okay. If you can provide some of your own data, I think that's really useful, but it's not, necess it's not absolutely prescribed, okay? Um, and it's obviously a bit late now, but a lot of people did start with the citizen science stuff early. And so in our introduction, we've got to set out what we're going to do. There should be no, no surprises. Even if you say in the introduction, we'll have a discussion about the role of citizen science. Yeah, that's fantastic. Ah, yes, uh, good question, Ellie. I'll come back to that in a sec. Okay, my main point about this is in the introduction and when you're doing your, the rest of your assignment, particularly your discussion, there shouldn't be any surprises. Don't start a discussion in a, a, a section in your discussion about the value of citizen science if you haven't mentioned up here that you're going to have at least a discussion about citizen science. Does that make sense? So you can, you can post edit, you've got to go backwards and forwards. When we read the introduction, of course, the discussion has, has the guts of things, right? Okay. But in the introduction, you've got to flag what's coming, even if it is, we'll include a discussion on climate change, uh, on citizen science. Does that make sense? So everything here sort of needs to be flagged. Okay. Now, a question from Ellie. Uh, use the scientific name. Uh, yes, use the sign, scientific name. I think uh, this is a scientific journal article. Um, so you can decide early on. Uh, identify the common name and the scientific name, and then keep referring to the scientific name or refer to the common name, but just try and be consistent. Don't, don't keep swapping them in and out one for the other. Okay, just to clarify, do we have to mention citizen science in our report if we didn't do a project? Yes, yes, even if you weren't 
uh, involved in a citizen science project, um, I think through, and if you go back to the starter kit, uh, and the last thing I put in the starter kit is an example of a search that I did on citizen science. I just used koalas. So I did two searches and even, even um, I found some articles to do with koalas and citizen science, which talk about, talk about the value of citizen science. So yeah, I think you can, the answer is yes. Um, M, the answer is yes. You, you do need to make that connection. Um, so even if you're referring to some articles about that, yeah? And, and if you can't find any science, citizen science relating specifically to your species, then, then of course you can do something general on citizen science. Okay. There are several students who have drawn a, a bit of a blank. They have discovered a huge gap in the research around their particular species. While there might be some general work available around impact on a particular family of, of animals or plants, uh, some people have found a distinct gap. Now that is a great research story in itself, isn't it? Okay, because they can talk about what's been found with um, other species within that broader family, but the fact that they couldn't find anything or, or found very little on their particular species, that's a, that's a really rich discussion in itself. Does that make sense? Now that, that's only applying to sort of uh, several people at the moment who I've had we've been in contact with. They've just sort of drawn a blank. So we've helped them, I hope, um, develop that into a bit of a story. So. Um, um, John. Yes. Thank I feel you. like you've missed um, Jessica's question about Sorry, the, Jessica. the word count. <gasps> Sorry, Jessica, word count. Okay, yes. Yes, Jessica. Um, uh, I'll come back to that, Jessica. Can you remind me, Rose? Uh, I want to talk about that specifically at the end. So yeah, I did miss that question, but I will come back. Okay, so just make sure you at least flag everything that's going to be in the discussion is at least flagged. It doesn't have to be too much. You don't have to overlap, but you need to flag everything. Yeah, I don't, we don't generally like, a good report doesn't have any surprises. So when we get to the discussion, uh, you, you're delivering on your promises, if that makes sense. Uh, sorry, John, can our species be extinct or historical or is it just focusing more on the impacts of recent climate change? Uh, Emily, let's keep it recent. Um, uh, Emily, yes, I, that was a funny answer, wasn't it? Just to say your name back to you, type your name back to you. Um, okay, I would rather it be, I'd rather it be recent if you want to do an historical account of how climate change um, significantly impacted and led to the extinction of a species, yep, you can, but I want you to talk to us. So we set this up properly. It's a little bit more challenging. It, so I'd prefer you did something current, but if you want to do that historical one, that is okay. Uh, thing that springs to mind is, well, there's 34, 34 uh, species of mammal that got an instinct in Australia, but that's not so much to do with climate change. Um, yeah, so let's just go with that, Emily. But yes, you can, but we need to talk it through a little bit. It's better to do something current. All right, so no surprises. So go back. You've got, this is weaving. Okay, you're weaving this story together. So you have to go back from your introduction to your discussion. Okay, so, and importantly, it's gotta be exciting, you know? Um, the abstract provides that really good overview, technical executive overview, which is great, but there's gotta be something in here that draws the reader on too, yeah? There's got to be some promise of, of something exciting in the findings or, you know? So, so you've got to make sure that you are, are drawing your reader in and, and giving the reader several reasons to continue reading. Okay? Good. Right. Method. Now, I have given you the method section. 
And of course, uh, the references appear here, but that was just for your, your convenience. Of course, those references belong in the references, okay? So you can take care of that yourself. Now, if you just cut and paste this in and fill in the gaps, uh, remember we're adding, you're, you're looking at between two and five articles to basically compare. That's what we're doing. And we're doing this through what we, in our methodology, um, we're, we're doing desk research, right? And that's, a, a, I do a lot of desk research. Um, I publish on desk research. Uh, well, some of my articles that I've done are, are on desk research uh, are, as my methodology. So it's a perfectly legitimate form of, of, of science investigation. So, um, and we're going to use between two and five articles uh, and we're going to group them. So you can fill out this, this form, just say if you had three, yeah? Uh, now, as well as identifying, we're going to do some them thematic analysis and, and the particular um, analysis we're going to do is uh, grounded theory. And it's a very uh, elementary uh, start in grounded theory. So we, we haven't got too much into the theory, but we've got enough that we can get by. Now, where I've used this graph, you can keep that if you want. Um, or you can start adding a little bit here. You can redesign this and tell me what, tell me what the codes and, and themes were that you looked at. Yes, yeah, Isabella, yes. So these articles, of course, uh, will appear in the reference list at the end. Yep. Okay, and the purpose of the methodology and, and the use of, of grounded theory means that our, our, our study can be replicated. Okay? Someone else can come and do this, do this study properly. I can, and I just want to reassure people that I can spell. It's just my typing it is, uh, it leads a lot to be desired. There you go. Okay. So if you want, no problem, cut and paste that in, that's fine. But if you want to rearrange this, and um, talk about what these codings are and, and what these um, themes are in here, that's really useful. It's extra, but it's useful. It makes the report better. Are we using your methodology? Methodology, not mythology. Um, I assume that's a typing thing. Part as a scaffold for us, as in do we keep it, tweak it, or particles? Well, Megan, I hope I just answered that. You can keep it in its entirety and use it as is, as a base. The more, the more, the more you uh, tweak, uh, the better, all right? So if you cut and paste this in, I won't be saying, we won't be saying, oh, crap methodology, fail. I mean, that's a pass, that, that passes that section, right? No problem. But if you tweak it and tell me what the themes are, um, that's great. Now. Uh, what are these themes? Well, I read one the other day, just looking at a draft, and the person came up with um, habitat, uh, food, uh, and I think it was migration maybe, as the things, the themes that they were looking at in those reports. So they were essentially the headings um, that they uh, included in their research. Uh, were these things. Uh, does the articles in table one have to be from Google Scholar? Okay, the articles from table one have to be peer reviewed uh, articles. Okay, they have to be peer reviewed articles. They have to be fairly recent and they've got to, they've got to have some data because you're, you're looking at the data. Oops, that went privately, Charlie. Sorry, I meant to go back to all. So Charlie asked the questions. The articles have to be from Google Scholar. So they have to be, they have to be peer-reviewed journal articles. Now, the best way to find peer-reviewed journal articles is through Google Scholar. So no, they don't have to be from Google Scholar, but I'd be wondering where they're coming from unless you've got uh, a collection of 
hard copy journal articles, which not many people have nowadays. Uh, maybe the library, if you've been in the library, there might be some hard, hard copy journal articles where you can shift through them. Um, does that answer that question, Charlie? Okay, peer reviewed, it's not a silly question, it's an important question. Peer review. Peer review is a fundamental process that, that happens, I'm still sending to Charlie on, uh, on our own. Uh, yeah, so Charlie, okay. So peer, what's peer review? Right. Um, peer reviewed means that, that other people in the field have looked at the article. So typically this happens and I've got IP review for several journals and I've got some reviews to do actually, uh, as well as all this marking that's coming and the marking that I've got for my other subject. Anyway, so uh, a, a, a journal has an editorial board and, um, and papers get submitted. The editorial board look at the paper, then they, then they de-identify the article and send it to three scholars in that field. It is like quality control, but better. So normally, normally three, three um, scholars uh, in the field of that article. God, my spelling's getting worse or is it my typing? Three scholars will get sent it, uh, 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 an article. And they, we, uh, the, the scholars read it and comment and evaluate and, and recommend if it should be published, if it should be reviewed and further worked on, or it should be uh, rejected, okay? And then that goes to the editor, the editor, and then the editor talks to the uh, author, um, and then the author responds appropriately. So I'm, I'm looking at a journal article now that I rejected. Uh, I read it at the start of the session from a, from a journal that I review for, and I rejected it. I had some if issues with, their, um, with the claims they were making and pretty much the lack of external report. So I rejected it. And the other two reviewers wanted uh, minor changes. I wanted major changes. So I've got that article back now in my inbox and I can review it. So it means that when, they, um, when that article does get published, if it does get published, it has been thoroughly examined. Essentially, it's been examined by three experts in the field. Yeah. And so that's why peer reviewed articles are the best articles. It is like Tiama said, quality control. Okay, um, so, but it's not just my say, it also, there's an editorial board associated as, as well. Does that make sense? So that's why peer reviewed stuff is even, even better. Awesome, so how do we know if they're peer reviewed? Right, because uh, to be an academic journal, they, you have to have a reviewing process. Yeah. Uh, I, um, so most of the stuff on Google, uh, you, you'll be Google Scholar, sorry, Google Scholar, not Google, Google Scholar will find peer reviewed articles. Yep. Now, and it's the world's, it's not a, a, um, an equal playing field. Some articles are better than others and, and articles can have rankings. Okay. They can be quartile one uh, ranking, which is the top article and they're highly, um, it's really hard to get articles into them, uh, down to uh, Q4, which are the lower ranking, uh, Q, Q4, which are the uh, lower ranking articles. So uh, the peer reviewing articles even have a, a hierarchy, but we're not getting into that uh, this time round. We did last year, we're not getting into that this time round. So if you go to Google Scholar you, and you go find a journal article, you will find it's a peer review journal. Uh, CSU Library will also say if something has been peer reviewed as well. Yes, that's, that's true. Yeah. So we're using peer reviewed journal articles, which brings, let, let's just come back to that in a minute. Okay. So I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. What, what you need to do now is understand this methodology. Uh, read through it, make sure you understand it, and that's fine. Fill in the three articles, two to five articles that you're going to do, right? If you tweak this, the better it is, okay? So where I've just said themes and codes, you can write out, and in this case, the themes were blah, 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 and whatever, right? 
Then you move into your results section. So in the results section, you're pretty much explaining what... Excuse me, John. Sorry, yes. can I just ask a very quick question? You can with ask a long question. And, with yep. those themes and codes, yep. um, is it the sort of thing that you might identify um, as you're doing your research because you can always comment that, that you are unable to find information on those codes and, or do you, or is it better to do it the, the other way where you find your articles and identify your codes and themes? Oh, you know what I mean? Like the, yeah, the horse before the cart or the cart it, It's the better cart. to do it as you're reading and they emerge. And they emerge and yeah. then, right, and then yeah. rather than doing searching under those types yeah. of things. Yeah. It's hard to create yeah. a code then go looking for it. Yes. Uh, unless yeah. you're doing unless you're doing a meta analysis and you're looking at hundreds of articles. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Okay. Great. Thank you. Later. Yep. Um, so that's a really good comment. So, so unless you're doing hundreds of articles, uh, have your codes preset. For this one, you only got two to five articles. Read them, and the, then the, you'll see the themes will will emerge. Okay. Good question. Right. So then we get into our results. And this is you're telling us about these things. You're telling us what you found. Both articles, as regard as habitat, both each article mentioned this as a regard, regard to um, reproduction. Uh, these articles uh, said this as a, a result uh, in regard to food, food sources. The articles said this. Yeah, does that make sense? Right. Now, that's your results. Then you then you go. Okay, you got your results. So now this is the guts of it. What, what does this mean? This is where we discuss things. Yes, in the results, you only talk about the two, good question, Haley. In the results, you're only talking about your two to five articles, right? That's the, you're talking about them. When you get to the discussion though, this is where you can bring in other references. What does this tell us? Let's go back to our original thing in our introduction, the impact of climate change on this species, right? So this is where we revisit this. We've done our results, now we draw from our results and we, we say, what is happening here? What is actually going on? What does this mean? And this is where you would have read widely, this is where you can go, well, what? This is, um, as a result of these studies, um, this particular species is in, is in real crisis, right? Now, you might find several references that agree with that. So you'd include those as well. So nothing on ALA results, for example, distribution screenshots. Um, uh, no, 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 good question. Good question to you. You can refer to your ALA stuff. Okay, you can bring that back in because up here in the introduction, you would have, may have said, well, and we'll look at some um, data from the Atlas of Living Australia. So you can bring that into your discussion. And you can talk quite specifically then about, well, if this continues, this species will disappear on the eastern seaboard. Here's the distribution from ALA at the moment, right? And here's the temperature uh, forecast for climate change, uh, which will eliminate um, favourable conditions for this species. Yeah, does that help, T? Abby, uh, do we quote the articles we use in the discussion, but bit too as well as the research? Do we quote the articles we used in the discussion? Uh, Abby, what do you mean? So do we quote the articles we used in the discussion? Sorry, I wrote it wrong. Yeah, so do we quote the um, articles that we got in the results bit, sorry, um, in the discussion as well as the yeah, other research? Yeah, yeah, you do. More, more, moreover, you might talk about the themes that you've identified. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah. Now, that, uh, so, so I'll just go to Megan. Uh, is this in results or discussion? Uh, we're talking about the discussion now. This is where we bring in the work of others into the discussion. The result is just the work of these guys. Yeah. And into the discussion, uh, we bring in the work of others. So to clarify, articles and evidence information can appear in the discussion that is not referenced in the results. Yes. Yes, Megan, it is expanding it. You might find articles that agree, agree with your analysis. You might find articles that, that disagree with, with what was found in those articles, in, in your 
results. Okay, this is the discussion. So if you've read really widely, right, to find your two to five articles, well, you're not, you haven't wasted your time because you're going to use, you know, 600 words, four to 600 words. You're going to use, you know, five to 10 references in here maybe. Now, can we talk about the difference between citing and quoting, right? Um, and in, oh, gee whiz, you're going to, uh, a quoting, I don't think I've used my quote, not quoting, uh, when we quote. So this is a quote, right? When we take out the, um, the exact words. Unless it's something really, really powerful, uh, we don't actually quote a lot, right? And you do your insect citation as you well. But mostly what we're doing is paraphrasing, remember? So go back to the, go back to the uh, stuff we did in the help, help button in the starter packs, and we're talking about paraphrasing. You won't, unless it's something really, really powerful and you really want to make a strong point, you wouldn't be doing much direct quoting in the discussion, right? You might use some direct quotes here in your research, yeah, because you're trying to make a powerful statement or summarize something they said. Um, but generally, I did in the results. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine, Chelsea. Yeah, yeah. In the results is fine. It's fine. It's fine to quote. Quoting isn't a isn't wrong. It's just that it takes a takes up a fair bit of space. Where paraphrasing is better, we can we can um, give something a lot more support. When you quote something, you're giving one source a, a fair bit of time. In your, in your general writing. So it's gotta be something important. Otherwise you're just wasting time. Are we using APA 6? We're using APA 6, yes, and we're using APA uh, 7. So don't worry. The main technical difference, the main technical difference between APA 6 and APA 7 that affects you is the use of et al. In APA 6, when there's multiple authors, all authors are on first appearance. In APA 7, you can go to et al. So, so in APA 6, all authors first, then et al. In APA 7, you can go straight to et al for multiple sources. Does that make sense? So don't, don't panic. If your if your EndNote set to APA six, it's fine. If it's set to APA seven, because there's a little patch you can put in, that's fine. Yeah, some of the articles have twenty authors plus. Yeah, so go APA seven. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah, uh, straight to et al on any on first appearance. See, yes, yeah, so that's that's why they made the changes to APA because just as a backstory, because. Um, because uh, um, you know, uh, in in my professional life as a researcher and, and academic, uh, you, there's a sub, a saying called "publish or die." Um, <clears throat> so we have to publish quite quite vigorously uh, to a certain standard. And of course, the higher up the tree you go, the more you publish. So a professor publishes quite a lot, um, much more than someone like me, a senior lecturer, so, or is expected to. But in this ever crowded environment, more and more people are being encouraged to co-author things and have multiple things. So I'm on some articles where I'm the sixth author, you know, so that's why that's becoming more common. Okay, so results. Just before we leave results, if you're using graphs and things, graphs, tables, et cetera, from your two to five studies, right? Make sure, make sure you understand it, right? Don't just whack something in that's just crazy and you don't, you don't get it, right? Because, and, and the follow on from that is, you've got to make sure your reader understands it as well. Yeah, the reader has to understand it. So sometimes you have to add a little bit of a, a descriptor. Does it make sense? So sometimes you have to add a bit of a descriptor. Don't just whack in some table 
that you don't understand. Make sure you understand it and you can explain and, and your reader can understand it and it's explained. Yeah? Right? And then, then we move to the conclusion. It's really hard sometimes to separate the conclusion and the discussion. And so if this is what, uh, four to 600 words, just, just say that, that this is, is um, five, 600 words. Just, I'm just making this up. Just say this is seven paragraphs, right? Okay. Uh, the, the, last, the last two paragraphs, well, the conclusion then is just, is just the last two paragraphs. Does that make sense? If there's seven paragraphs, the, the conclusion's often the last two because what do you do in, in a passage of writing when you get to the last couple of paragraphs? It's, it's just the summary of what of the discussion that's happened, isn't it? Yeah, the summary. Yeah, conclusion slash, slash summary. How's that? So often, often it becomes the one section. So don't freak out. But it usually, you usually finish with one or two um, in, for this size article, you usually finish with one or two paragraphs that, that sum it up. Why, why, why I just didn't just say discussion is because it does need an endpoint. It does need bookends. So all the stuff you flagged here in the introduction. Yep. And I often do this when I'm reading, if the abstracts got my attention, I'll read the introduction and often I'll shoot straight through to the conclusion. And it should be able to make some sense. Yes? Comments, questions? And, I, and I'm circling back to word count. Okay, I'm coming to word count in a minute. Right, so if you're starting off, that's really great. There, there's your blueprint. If you're well down the track, that's fine. Just, just go back and review what you're doing. It might look a little bit different, um, but but you still need to go back and, and, and check it against this. Cool. We want you to be successful. We're not trying to give you something that you can't do. Yeah. And like the whole subject, you know, the when I, I think a lot of people realize that the modules made heaps of sense when we get towards the end and we look at the mess we're in uh, with the Anthropocene. And if we can, and we've got all this knowledge, it really helps. And it's a bit like the essay. Okay, you start gathering your stuff, you're getting your readings together, you're looking for your articles, you're focusing on your species, you're focusing on your climate change. And then as you start to put it together, it makes sense. With graphs and statistics, do you want us to use them in our results or, or discussion? But a bit of both, I think you'll identify them in the results. Yeah. And then, and then in your discussion, you can say, well, as we saw with table whatever, you know, um, summer temperature averages are going through the roof. Get it? The good, good question, Ty. Does that make sense? So it's all, you'd have your graphs in the results, but you may refer back to them in here. Cool. All right. So as for word count, the original word count for this was 2,000 to 2,500 words, right? Uh, normally, this would exclude, exclude references, okay? But this has been a little bit of an un, unusual circumstance that we've found us in this teaching session. So, so what I've done in a previous thing, and it might be in, um, in the starter packs, is if we go with the bottom, bottom of, of the word count, so that's 2000 words, and we go, okay, 10% either side. And if we use the top, the top of the word count for this, for the 10%, that gives 250 words. So it's, that means around 750 words without references, okay? Um, but I'm not, we're not going to, we're, we're fairly lenient, okay? We, we want to see it around 1750 words complete. All right? So if you're struggling, struggling to get the word count, aim for 750, 
and include your references. If you are the other end of the scale and you're struggling to keep in the word count, <laughs> take out your references. We, we want you, we, we're just trying to be as open and flexible as we can for it. When you say exclude, does that mean in text citations? Yes, 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 basically. But I think the golden, the golden rule here is aim for 750 words all up. When you've got everything done, don't count your reference list, but when you, when you put your word count on from introduction to the end of the conclusion, bottom line, get to 1750 and, and, and you're in good territory. No, not paraphrasing. Paraphrasing's your own words, Katie, so, all right. Now, if you are like some students have contacted me and gone, wow, I've written so, so much. I think I'm over the 2,500. Well, that's where maybe we might exclude the references and, and, and look where we can cut down and, and get it to a manageable size because we have to mark them and you have to complete it. So does that make sense? We're, we're, just, we're just trying to be trying to be fair and flexible, knowing that <laughs> a lot of uh, a lot of this we would have done in in-class stuff. I'm almost double the word count and it's stressing me out. No, 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 don't stress out. I have your draft, um, T, and it's on my uh, list of things to do today or tomorrow, it is to help you cut that, cut that back. All right, so don't stress. Um, often it's easier to cut out words than to find words. So don't panic, all right? I'll have a look at yours today or, and we'll see what we can jettison. All right, if we need to. Don't panic, don't panic. Okay, now, importantly, this whole time, you need to be very aware of, of the uh, marking criteria. Right, so let's just go to the bottom line here. 60%, 60% of this assessment, so what's, I forget what this is worth now. Whatever it's worth, 60% of it, is about its scientific validity. Yep. So we, we're looking for the overall quality, evidence of independent investigation, original questioning and analysis, and attempts to understand multiple perspectives. You've got to have some validity to your science is what we're saying. And the stronger it is here, the better it will be. Yep. These things are important and they are allocated marks, right? But this, this is the do or die section. Make sense? Right, so please keep referring, um, referring back. Well, nearly 50 in at the moment, that's sensational guys. Um, that, that's, I've lost my chat, there we go. Okay, 30, ja Jamie, 30 what? Jamie, 30%, ah, 30, thanks Jamie, thanks, 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 yeah. So out of that 30%, more than half of it's tied up in your validity, your scientific validity. So just keep that in mind, okay? I think one of these links were dead, but somewhere I've put in a, um, a new link and I'll fix it up for next time but I have provided a new link to that article. Um, and if the link doesn't work, just, just go with that heading in Google Scholar and you'll find it. All right, but what I, hope, what I hope has happened is that you have been or about to start reading lots of science journals. Yes, so you're getting used to the genre. The genre, the genre is very important. And, and I've said before that a lot of you uh, um, are very, very strong uh, in, in the arts and languages. That's where, you, that's where your bread and butter has been mostly academically. Um, and, and, for the, and I'm only speaking generally, but a lot of us have moved away from science. The science and in, in the arts and language, they want you to use lots of words basically, don't they, All right? In science, in science, we don't. This is the biggest, biggest transfer to the genre. Is um, you be very, uh, you got to be very specific and very succinct. 
okay? When we're writing in science, we're, we're precise or specific and, and succinct. We don't waste a lot of words with flowery sort of stuff, okay? But I think, I hope you're getting that, you're getting that training in the genre by reading, reading articles. Okay. Uh, when I do that, I feel like I'm not explaining that. What, what do you mean? Uh, I need more practice for sure. Yes, yes. It's a fine line and it's a skill. Okay. And we know that for many of you, this is your first attempt at writing in this genre, any substantive writing in this genre. Yeah, not writing too much. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't mean you can't add things because you, you know, you know, from me, we're very passionate about science, but we've got it. We restrict our conversations uh, to, to revolve around or refer to uh, the evidence. But, but keep reading the science journal articles and, and you get a sense of where they were. Now, I also know that the methodology, the methodology and the articles you are reading is, is, often, uh, is often complicated and, and often the results re, uh, refer to a whole lot of um, statistical equations and, and, and crazy looking graphs and stuff. Okay, you're not expected to understand all of that, but the best journal articles also explain what those results mean. And that thus, that's why I said, don't whack in anything, any graph or table that you're not, that you don't understand. Yep, and, and the best journal articles will explain why they've included those graphs. All right, wow, guys, this is fantastic. Uh, I think I, I answered the question on, on words, word count, which someone asked. Rose, have I missed any other questions that were important? Or does anyone want to just open up for, for comment now? Nope. Great, Megan. I'm, yeah, we, we do try and help. And again, our purpose isn't to give you tasks that will fail you. Our, our, our purpose is to give you tasks and help you be successful. Okay. I have a question, John. Go, Isabella. Is it? No, it's not Isabella. I just, that was a quote. Who's talking? Sorry. Sam. Hey, great. Shoot. Um, with the graphs and images that we used, are we just referencing them with websites or trying to find the author of them? Uh, you should cite them. So if they're from a website, they still should be cited. Yep. Um, if they're from the journal article, well, you, you can cite them from the journal article. Okay. So websites are good. I know we were like, you know, the Academy of Science website's really authoritative, for example. Okay. Um, the gen, yes. So, but generally other websites, we, we just got to be careful that they have, that they're official in some capacity. They're not like, you know, John Rafferty's rant on the world .com. Um, that, that's, that would not be a terribly reliable source. So it might be useful to include a comment from that website if it ever existed um, to help with the discussion or, or to shape an argument, but it wouldn't provide much evidence. Roughly how many, okay, so I've just, thank you, Sam, good question. I hope that answered it. I've got some questions coming up here. If the journal has many graphs and studies, can we only refer to a certain graph section or do we have to refer to the whole article? No, you can take pieces out of it, Claudia. You can take a section out of it. And in the results section, you'd say the most pertinent section of this article was this bit. The most pertinent uh, section of this article is this section. Okay, does that make sense, uh, Claudia McKimmy? So they don't have to take the whole whole lot. You can say I've just focused on this section, and if it's a really long, comprehensive study, that's okay. You can that's that's a really handy to thing, you, and just acknowledge that this was a very comprehensive. You know, article A was a very comprehensive study that blah 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 looked at all these things. But for the purposes of this article, we're just focusing on this section. 
Roughly how many references should we be aiming to include? Well, good question. Let, let's, just, uh, let's just see. Oh, look at these questions flowing in uh, into my, people are being double uh, emailing while they've been listening to me. So, so where am I? So how many references? Well, uh, let, let's, just, let's just workshop this a little. <clears throat> now I've lost me. I've lost me, uh, where am I? Lost me chat, here we go. Bring back the chat. Right, so, okay, so I'll just workshop this with you, Claudia. That was a really good question, Katie Brown. Right, okay, so how many references? Well, I'm thinking that there's gotta be between five and 10 on, on climate change. Yeah, there's gotta be between maybe five or, or 10 on your species, because you have gotta be a bit of an expert. I'm thinking there's gotta be five to 10 on, on the impacts of climate change on your species. Um, and you've got your, you got your two to five, which are your specialist ones you're comparing. Yeah. And then, then throughout your discussion, you, you may have um, say five to 10 through your discussion. So let's just go with the bottom. We've got 20, 22, 20 references. So around, so let's just call it the bottom end would be 15 to 20, 15 to 20 references. Yep, now remember, remember, I've given you some for your methodology, oh, that includes your methodology as well. So uh, we've given you some, and um, if you've got your, if you've got your, if you've got your EndNote set up, and Google Scholar set up. I'll just, I'll just show you something just quickly with this. Um, I think you may have said before, John, did we need a title such as, yes, yes, let's go with a, again, you're, you're looking at journal articles and you're seeing their titles. So I always have a working title uh, when I'm working on an article, just so I know which project I'm talking about. Uh, when I do write the abstract, then I usually go back and, and find, find an article that uh, reflects that, reflects that. Does that make sense? So I just wanna, just wanna show you something again on Google Scholar. So, so, so here we go. Uh, chat keeps closing. Uh, Rose, how are we going? Did we miss any questions? Earlier you spoke about, uh, I think I may have said it before, John. Yeah, okay, uh, M, M Bell. Um, Earlier spoke about recent articles. I found a good one from 95. Is that recent enough Q's? Well, it, uh, it, it depends. Um, it depends. Um, if it's a really seminal, a seminal, seminal work that's really important and found something which lots of other people refer to, then yes, it's not too old, right? But, but if you're talking about current numbers of a particular species, and the earliest thing you can find is 95, I'll be thinking, no, there's gotta be, there's gotta be more recent stuff than that, right? So it's gonna depend a little bit. Generally, generally, journal, science journal articles are, are four to five years old, uh, have four to five years of currency for contemporary stuff. But like I said, there's no heart, I can't say don't have anything beyond that. If, if you've found a study that's 1995 that was absolutely critical breakthrough to our understanding of something, then yes, include it. So I'm just jumping into Google Scholar here because uh, um, I had my uh, youngest uh, boy at home a lot uh, from second year ANU. Uh, and uh, I just want to show you something. Um, climate change in koalas, this, extending this example. Remember, I've set mine, mine up to find the US, the library. So I've gone into settings. Uh, remember, go to library links and make sure that you've put in CSU library. That makes it a lot easier. Okay, so we go back to our searches. Whoops. So here's, here's my search on climate change in koalas. Now, now watch this, folks, just, just a reminder. See the here's here's 50 people that have cited this article. So if I click on this, it takes me to all the other articles that are, that have that have uh, cited that. So so do you know um, M that 1995 article? 
Well, that's okay, but if you click on, on the, cite, the cited button, you might find someone more recently who cited it. And you can do um, Rafferty um, uh, 2020 as cited, or, or sorry, Rafferty um, uh, 1995, right, as cited by um, uh, M. Bell uh, 2220. Now that, that improves that, doesn't it? See, that, that makes that, now it's a bit more current. Okay, uh, I'll come to your question in a minute, Megan. Um, so, so I click the citation button here now, the little quotation mark, see, look. But there it is. I, I, can, I can manually cut and paste that in if I'm doing a manual one or moreover, watch what happens. If I click EndNote, right? It saves that enw.enw folder, right? Now watch what happens, because I've already got EndNote open, okay? So my EndNote library's open, right? There's my one for this, yeah? Right, so if I go back to that, where was it? Here. Now watch what happens when I click this. Watch this for magic. I double click that, yeah? So if I jump in EndNote now, and my imported, whoops, that, that's crazy. I don't know what happened there. Pressed the wrong button. Right. Oh, could not be open. Ah, oh, damn it. I haven't got my right. Oh, don't you hate that? So I close that. I've got this file. I open it up. What's it doing? Oh, maybe I haven't got my library opened up. I haven't. Sorry. Look, what I'm getting at is if. Uh, Stop laughing at me, I'm old, I make mistakes. So I've got this library open. Um, really? So I've double clicked on it. Ah, this is frustrating for you and for me. Ah, oh, it doesn't want to do it. Nine times out of ten, that'll go straight into your lot, into your, into your, um, into your EndNote. Okay, but don't forget, I've also, I've also set up a folder where I can uh, import straight in. But yes, the little quotation mark here, even if you're doing it manually, look there it is, perfect APA, ready to go, cut and paste. Oh, I didn't spec, I didn't. Sorry, this is goes back to your question, M. Um, that's what I spoke about. So if you're, I can only find something in 1995 and I go, okay, Rafferty said 95 uh, as cited by Mbell uh, 2020. Now that's got more currency. Okay, so back to Megan. Uh, if I'm doing magpies, is there not a lot of research specific to my species? Can I reference around that talk about avarian species and discuss? Yes, exactly, Megan. So, so if you can't find much on magpies, you can talk about avifauna uh, in general, and then highlight in your discussion the need the need to know more about an iconic species. You know, it's there plain as day under our nose, and we don't even know what's going to happen to it. So that's a good point about your discussion is to identify what's next. Okay, so Emily Code, what happens if we find data or results that are inconclusive? Well, again, this is part of our research story. You know, this is tell me more. You've identified a gap. This is really good. Okay, you, you highlight, we know climate change is coming. Um, we know that this species has, has some vulnerabilities, but we don't know anything about it. This is a, an important area for more research then. So that's what your discussion becomes around, Emily. But I, I showed my boy from uh, uh, my youngest fellow He's in his, as I said, in his second year. Um, I'm trying to convince him to use EndNote, um, but I showed him this one and he couldn't believe it. Uh, you just cut and paste it in. Uh, if I do, I'll try again with this one. If I just do this, then EndNote. Double click that. 
Oh, it's going into data. Never mind. You can go and look at my notes on that. I don't know why it's not working now. I haven't done something quite right. Anyway, it is pretty awesome, isn't it? And all these, all these you can get, that you know, CSU have got access to them. Woohoo, happy days. But that, that's a good one to, to get an older article and, and make it more relevant. Okay, so we've covered a, covered a lot of ground. I, I, I do think that I'll stop recording in a moment. Um, but let, let's just chat. Any, any other questions, comments? I know that you love me and this was super informative and you're just delighted that you're gonna have me for another, sex, another, another session of teaching, or well, many of you will. Next year, all of you will, because it'll be in the EC second year. Uh, the questions or comments? Any, any loving down the line for what a fabulous team we are and how we've, we've made life easy for you and presented such good stuff? Oh, uh, you don't cry, Em. I don't like crying. I can't ever cry. Yes, much love. Thanks, Isabel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Here it comes. Here it comes. And, and June, fabulous. Thanks, Sonia. See you. Good luck with the garlic. And you know that the survey's coming, don't you? The end of session survey. And I should, I'll stop recording now. And, and I'll add.